Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Elizabeth Ercola, Program Coordinator for the UFIFS PASCO Extension Office. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to learn sewing keywords and terms. So for this presentation, we're going to be discussing and learning about objectives, importance of terms, purchasing, and soliciting donations. The terms we're going to learn about are needle, thread, thimble, fabric, shears, yard, pin, hem and hemming, press and iron, and stitch. So importance of terms. Um, sewing is a multifaceted trade that provides an array of options, opportunities, and therapy. If you're going to learn how to sew and sewing is uh, something that you've always wanted to try, it provides an array of options. Um, options such as uh, sewing uh, for either uh, therapy, for a new job, if you're interested in sewing, um, to teach someone else how to sew and uh, maybe pass it down to another generation, or if you'd like to, uh, for instance, teach a friend how to sew so that they can start a sewing business. Uh, many folks will uh, sell items such as doilies or pillowcases, which are uh, very easy to do projects and uh, folks can um, eventually launch a business and sell these items either online or uh, at a store and uh, there's many many opportunities within sewing and it's also therapeutic in a certain sense it tends to uh, help folks decompress a bit when um, uh, maybe you had a long day and you just want to unwind you can take to your sewing uh, kit or your sewing machine and um, just start sewing and it's uh, really relaxing. Also, the knowledge of sewing terms is beneficial, uh, especially when purchasing and or soliciting donated sewing supplies. So if you are going to um, purchase sewing supplies, uh, such as a needle or thread, it's important to know uh, what you're looking for either if you're ordering online or purchasing at a store or if you're writing an email or a letter or reaching out to someone and you're interested in soliciting donated sewing supplies. Uh, these terms are essential and if you know uh, what you are requesting you all can be on the same wavelength and it's easier to communicate when you are um, soliciting the donations or uh, purchasing uh, sewing supplies. It, it helps in knowing what you're looking for. If you're looking for uh, an iron, knowing uh, what an iron looks like and the term for it, it really facilitates uh, the purchase or the donated um, item request. Purchasing and soliciting donated sewing supplies. When making purchases or soliciting donated sewing supplies in person, online, or over the phone, sewing terms will serve as a language in itself, and it easily identifies your needs, your requests, and purpose. It's important to know the sewing terms that you uh, are uh, going to use such as a needle, a thread, what's a yard, um, what's an iron, a stitch, a thimble. Thimbles are very essential, for instance, when you are sewing. It protects your finger from um, getting poked with a needle when you're going to push the needle through the fabric. We always want to be safe and uh, a needle uh, can harm you, so you want to always uh, be safe when using a needle. And uh, if you're a child, always make sure that you have um, an adult supervising you 
and uh, thimble is essential for anyone that's sewing by hand and it really protects your finger from getting poked with a needle when you're pushing the needle through the fabric. Um, the sewing terms are so important. So if we're having a conversation with someone at a store or online, uh, knowing what each term represents is essential and will eventually save you a, a lot of time. And so it easily identifies your needs and your requests and your purpose. Sewing. Sewing is, it's an amazing trade. It really is. Uh, whether you're sewing by hand or you're sewing with a sewing machine, it is a very, uh, a very helpful trade to know. Uh, you can uh, learn how to sew to help a neighbor, to help a friend. Maybe someone uh, purchased a, a set of pants um that maybe are too long and uh, you'd like to help them hem their pants or hem a skirt and so you can help them by sewing and hemming their pants a needle here up on top on the left is what we typically use to sew and uh, there is the thread when you thread the needle, what it looks like, and it goes through the loophole on the uh, top of the needle. And so the thread is down below it, and the thread comes in many different types. Uh, All-purpose thread is mainly what you would like to get started with if you're uh, learning how to sew and uh, you can purchase one that's all-purpose or one that's polyester uh, you can purchase one that's maybe reinforced uh, sometimes you'll have a reinforced uh, uh, type of thread uh, i once had to sew an instrument cover for a boat and so i went into the store let them know uh, the store associate what i was looking for and what my project was and it really helped in finding or locating the thread that was um, a good fit for the instrument cover that I was sewing and here we have the thimble that I mentioned a little earlier and so the thimble is a um, kind of like a some some are kind of cone shaped others are just uh, cylindrical they're round in shape and it fits uh, mostly um, almost one size fits all and they uh, come in also in different sizes but this is base a basic thimble and it's used to protect your finger when you are going to sew uh, your project and you're going to push the needle up here uh, with the thread through your project and you are going to use the uh, thimble here as a guard to protect your your finger and so fabric up here on the right we have all the different types of fabric and fabric um, it comes in an array of types and prints and patterns and uh, you have some that are made from silk others that are made from wool we've had uh, seen up here we we could see fabric that is uh, plaid some are um, you know floral patterns uh, they're just different types of fabric and it all depends on what you're sewing and what your project is and what you're interested in making and you can uh, identify that and then you can determine what the proper fabric will be so just please always know that there are different types of fabric uh, they range from wool to um, silk and uh, many many different patterns and you just have to identify uh, what um, your project calls for and here on the bottom we have shears Shears are very interesting because they are not exactly scissors. Um, they are a form of scissors. The difference is the handle. Uh, scissors typically tend to have very parallel and similar handles to where a set of shears will have 
a larger handle on the right and a smaller handle on the left to accommodate uh, your hands and your fingers for sewing. Sewing. So sewing uh, continued here on this slide. So at the top left, we've got yard. Can you see the ruler down below? A yard is typically three 12 inch rulers combined. The total of one yard is 36 inches. And we'll get into that in a, just a minute here. And that's the illustration for that. And you see the fabric up on top, ruler down below. The ruler is illustrating 12 inches. And if you combine 12 inches uh, times three, you will equal 36 inches. And that is the total of one yard, which is three rulers combined. So down below we have a pin and the pin is very similar to the needle and you'll see up on top it's got a uh, we, we could refer to as a head and so that is typically what a pin would look like. They come in uh, many different colors and uh, styles and uh, some folks like to get a little bit more crafty and use pins that maybe match their sewing room or their sewing project. And so that is a pin. It does not have the loophole up on top like a needle does. And that's the difference between a pin and a needle. And a pin is typically used to hold your hem in place. For instance, if you are uh, trying to sew the hem on a set of pants or on a skirt or on a sleeve, a uh, pillowcase uh, also, you would take multiple pins and space them out and pin your hem to hold it in place. And that it makes it easier when you are going to sew your hem. And so a hem is right here in the center, and that is what a hem looks like. And you will see the reverse side of the fabric. And always remember to uh, fold your hem with the pretty side in, and it's going to be opposite from the faded side. And you can see that is a hem up here. And the stitch uh, goes around the hem and it holds it in place. And now you can do this either by hand or on a sewing machine. Top right, we've got a press, uh, which is an iron. Irons also come in uh, an array of colors and styles. Uh, it's got a dial. Uh, iron uh, has an, uh, a dial up there. And it you can... Um, pretty much set it to what your fabric is. So if you're looking at ironing uh, your wool, you would want to get an iron that has a, or a press that has a setting for ironing wool as a fabric. So that's important to know, and that will be essential to the success of your project. If you are so, uh, sewing a project that the fabric uh, required for it would be cotton, then you would like to have a setting on your iron that is uh, for cotton. And you don't want it to get too hot or for it to be too cold uh, that it does not press your uh, project down. So I typically like to use an iron to hold my hem down in place. And if you iron it and you press it down uh, with the iron and it's at the pr appropriate setting, it will hold your hem in place uh, by heating it and uh, setting it in place so that when you're going to sew your hem either by hand or with a sewing machine. It pretty much folded it down because it pressed it down and it's easier to sew. So down below we have a stitch 
and that's pretty much what a stitch looks like and you would have uh, different stitches you can uh, do a stitch that's a zigzag by hand you can do it on a sewing machine you just have to have if it's on the sewing machine uh, the setting according to the sewing machine uh, and it has typically a dial with a diagram on the sewing machine now if you're going to stitch by hand uh, you can uh, put the uh, thread the needle is the first step the second step will be to uh, hold your hem in place, either with a pin that we have here to the left that we earlier discussed, or with an iron up on top, and you can press it down and uh, heat up your project so that you can hold your uh, hem there in place. So pretty much this is what a stitch looks like, and you would thread the needle through the fabric and you would stitch it and we will get into that at a later uh, in a later video and so that's pretty much what it looks like when you're going to stitch and it's important to know how to stitch and what it looks like and which one is the appropriate one for your project and these terms here are essential to sewing if you have any questions, please always know that uh, you could reach out to me and I will uh, provide you with my contact information later on in this pre presentation. All right, folks, so sewing terms and tips. Trimming the thread before threading the needle will make it easier to thread the needle and it'll save time. So if you trim your thread, it makes the tip of the thread a little bit more sharp, if you will, and it removes any um, frayed uh, thread because sometimes the tip of a thread can become a bit frayed. And so it makes it more difficult if it's frayed to thread your needle. So by frayed, I mean that it might have a few fibers on the tip that make it difficult uh, to thread the, the, the thread through the needle, uh, needle uh, loop. So if you trim the thread before uh, you thread the needle, it makes it easier and it will save you a ton of time because it'll make it a little bit easier to put the thread through the needle loop. So purchase an all-purpose thread. It will simplify the process and match most projects. And we talked about that a little earlier, and that is an all-purpose thread. Uh, it, typically, it typically helps uh, because it won't um, be too difficult to thread through your fabric because some threads tend to be a little bit thicker than others. Like I mentioned earlier, I had to sew an instrument cover once for a boat, and so the thread had to be uh, a bit thicker, and it made it more durable and to and resistant to the uh, rain and to the weather out there uh, where it was exposed to. Um, but it's important to have an appropriate thread and with an all-purpose th thread you typically you won't you can't go wrong uh, it can be essential to your almost to all projects is an all-purpose thread and it does simplify the process and it does match most projects uh, use a thimble uh, to push the needle through the fabric of your sewing project it does provide protection and we talked about that in depth uh, a little earlier in this presentation and it does protect your finger when you're pushing the needle through the fabric and while you're sewing uh, by hand. Fabric comes in all styles, patterns, prints, and types, and it does. And we talked about that a little earlier when we uh, discussed the fabric. And it is important to uh, know uh, what type of print you're looking for, uh, what type of pattern you're looking for. Sometimes we might be looking for a certain uh, type of print pattern or style or type of fabric for a specific project. 
Uh, let's say that we're looking for maybe a fabric to sew a pillowcase. Uh, if it would be a little bit colder, maybe during the winter months, you might want to look for a fabric that's made out of wool and it will keep you uh, warm while you sleep. And so maybe you're looking at making a sewing a, a pillowcase, uh, which you can also sew by hand or by a sewing machine. And so the pillowcase, uh, if you make it out of a wool fabric, right, uh, it's important to know that which type of fabric you're looking for for your specific project. Uh, starting your project with a user-friendly fabric like cotton will decrease stress that is brought on by an array of options. Sometimes we may experience uh, um, too many options to where it's overwhelming and we can't decide uh, or make a decision on which type of fabric we want for our specific project. So if that would be the case, um, you might want to start off uh, with cotton, which is an almost all-purpose fabric, and it will decrease uh, the stress and the overwhelming feeling of determining or deciding which fabric is best for your project. So it's a more user-friendly fabric and it's easier to sew either by hand or with a sewing machine. So that's fabric. And the difference between scissors and shears and sewing shears is the length and handle of sewing shears is typically longer and larger to accommodate hands for sewing projects. And we discussed that a little earlier in the illustration of shears and uh, pretty much with a set of shears that's newer you can't go wrong it will uh, help you in cutting your uh, your fabric for your project it'll help you in cutting your uh, thread that you're using for your project and a good set of shears uh, is always essential to sewing and so these are the sewing terms and tips uh, for this slide all right, so sewing terms and tips here continued. So a yard is the term used when purchasing or soliciting donated fabric. One yard is the equivalent to 36 inches. The total of three 12 inch rulers combined. And this is what we touched on a little earlier. And so if you are interested in uh, ordering or soliciting uh, donated fabric, you would go in to a store or write someone and uh, request uh, donated fabric. Depending on what you're looking at sewing, uh, you would want to request a uh, yard of fabric, for instance, to have enough fabric uh, to sew your project and how much fabric uh, is yielded for a certain project. Uh, for instance, uh, we were sewing masks recently uh, here at Extension and donating on behalf of Extension and 4-H and Luggage of Love. And so we would uh, look at a uh, six inch by nine inch uh, piece of fabric. So that's how much uh, fabric yields a, for a mask. So if you're interested in uh, soliciting donated fabric, you would definitely request, uh, if you're looking for a yard, uh, you would request um, 36 inches uh, total, which is the size of a 12, three 12 inch rulers combined. And that would give you enough fabric for, uh, for a project or multiple projects. And a pin is used to hold a hem in place when sewing. A fun sewing project is making a pin cushion for your wrist. So at a later time, we will most likely uh, do a presentation or a video on a pin cushion and sewing one up for yourself. So a pin cushion is um, pretty much a piece of fabric uh, over a, um, 
little bit of cotton. You can even use, um, it has to be the appropriate cotton type uh, for a pin cushion because once that your pin cushion uh, is in place and it's established and you sewed it, you want to be able to uh, put your pins in that pin cushion so that it will hold your pin cushions safely and no one will be uh, poked by a pin because it's sitting in a pin cushion. So uh, we'll talk about that in a later uh, video. Maybe we do a sewing project on a, making or sewing your own pin cushion either by hand or uh, with a sewing machine. And so that's uh, pretty much what a pin is. It's to hold your uh, hem in place and we discussed that a little earlier in the illustration. So an iron, a press. So it can be helpful when sewing a hem by pressing down the hem with the iron and the hemming process will be easier. So we have this highlighted here. So hem in this statement is a noun. So we are talking about sewing a hem. And now uh, when we're talking about hemming, right? Uh, it's a verb because it's an it's a it's an action. So um, uh, when you are hemming something, uh, you're folding down the fabric, and you're pressing it with an iron, which is uh, typically hot. And remember, we discussed earlier, the uh, dial or the setting on an iron must be the appropriate setting for that type of fabric that you are trying to iron or press or hem down. And so that is uh, an iron and it's uh, uh, very hot typically. So always be uh, careful. And if you're a um, uh, child and require supervision, always have an adult helping you if you're uh, pressing uh, with an iron. And an iron press, which we just discussed, is a pressing device that heats up at different temperatures that can be adjusted to a suitable temperature for the project's fabric. So I can't stress it enough. Please be very, very cautious with an iron and uh, or a press. And uh, when you are uh, using an iron for your project, make sure that the setting on the iron uh, corresponds to and with your project uh, fabric. It's important because if you have a lighter fabric, for instance, that's something like cotton that we discussed earlier, and you are uh, ironing um, wool, uh, you and you have the setting set to iron wool, it might be a bit too hot uh, for the cotton and it can damage uh, your project. So always make sure to have the appropriate setting on that iron uh, when you're pressing. And the word stitch is both a noun and a verb. In noun terms, we would say the stitch on the fabric looks neat. In verb terms, we would say that the person is interested in asking someone to stitch their project and make it look nice. So the word stitch is both a noun and a verb. So uh, we can uh, say that uh, the stitch on the fabric looks nice and offer someone a compliment or we can say, um, we can ask someone uh, to do us a favor and, hey, can you please stitch um, something on, on my project? So uh, it could both be a noun and a verb. And when you're discussing it as a topic or you're discussing it as an, an action. So this concludes our presentation on sewing tips and terms and objectives. We've discussed uh, many terms used in sewing, which are the sewing basic terms, and those will hopefully be beneficial when purchasing or soliciting donated sewing supplies. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I am most happy to help 
and uh, if I don't have the answer, I will point you in the right direction and do my best at doing that. I thank you so very much for joining us today. Uh, please feel welcome to contact us at my email address. It's E as in Elizabeth Urcola. That's U-R-Q-U-I-O-L-A at Pasco County, all together, FL.net. E-U-R-Q-U-I-O-L-A at Pasco County, FL.net for information on sewing keywords tips and terms and always remember to if you're a child to have an adult supervise you when sewing either by hand or uh, with a sewing machine and if you have any questions uh, we are here at the One Stop Shop in Dade City and we are the UFIFIS Pasco Extension Office always here to help and we are providing solutions for your life. Always remember to play it safe, and uh, if you're interested in a sewing project, we have a mask making tutorial on our website. Uh, it's on the www.pascocountyfl.net website, and it's a 4-H sewing tutorial for sewing your masks, and this is one that I made. And it's a easy sewing project, and you can go ahead and sew it, and uh, it will protect you and it's a safety mask and you can also donate it if you'd like and uh, we have a little bit of hand sanitizer here that I'm going to use here in just a minute and always please play it safe and uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us we're always here to help thank you again for joining us and for your time have a wonderful day